What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katia. In today's lesson, we're going to focus on vocabulary. We're going to learn 50 words that have to do with consumerism and minimalism. This video can stand you in good stead, especially for your speaking exam, if your topic is related either to consumerism or minimalism. Are you ready to broaden your vocabulary? If so, grab your notebook and let's kick off. Before we get down to business, I want to thank you so much. English Beats has just hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much for helping me reach this first milestone and making my crazy dream come true. Today, more than ever before, I know that impossible is nothing if you dream big and work hard for your dreams. Thank you for choosing me and sticking with English Bits. And I want to thank Peter and Katie for being so kind to me and helping me out with the content. And of course, my mom who gave me this wonderful idea to start my YouTube channel three years ago. Thank you. And now let's get started. I really recommend watching two documentaries on minimalism available on Netflix. A lot of words that we're going to learn today appear in these documentaries. So when you watch them, it will be much easier to understand everything. First, we're going to learn some nouns, verbs, phrasal verbs, adjectives and idioms. And after that, I'm going to read some inspiring phrases that I liked most when watching the documentaries. First, we're going to learn 12 nouns. The first noun is materialist. It's someone who believes that having a lot of money and possessions is the most important thing in life. Number two, prospective buyers. They are people who are expected to buy something. Number three, hoarder. It's someone who collects large amounts of something. Number four, buyer's remorse. It's a feeling of sadness and being sorry for something you have bought. For example, a lot of people feel buyer's remorse after a shopping expedition. Number five, void. It means a feeling of unhappiness because someone or something is missing. And we can also say a gaping void, which means a large void. For example, it's very common to have a gaping void in your life when you've lost your sense of purpose. Number six, unsustainability. It's a state of being unsustainable, which means causing damage to the environment by using more energy, wood, etc. than can be replaced naturally. For example, fast fashion is one of the main culprits of unsustainability. Number seven, consumer-driven society. It's based on working to sell stuff to the consumer. Number eight, yardstick. It's a standard by which you judge the success or value of something. For example, money shouldn't be the only yardstick of success. Number nine, staphitis. It's a made up word that means a new disease that is a result of owning too much stuff. Number 10, storage rental. It's a space you rent to keep your stuff. Number 11, clutter. It's a key word and it's a state of being untidy. For example, I'm not surprised you can't concentrate. Your desk is full of clutter. And last but not least, decluttering. It means getting rid of things in order to make your house more pleasant. And now we're going to learn 20 verbs. The first one, to hoard, long o, to hoard. And it means to collect large amounts of something. Number two, to accumulate things. 
It means to collect a large number of things over a long period of time. And we can also say to accumulate debt. Number three, to live for stuff. It means to work hard in order to buy things. Number four, to live paycheck to paycheck. It means to spend all the money you earn by or before the next time you're paid. For example, it must be stressful to live paycheck to paycheck. Next one, to fill the void. It means to fill a feeling of unhappiness because someone or something is missing. For example, a lot of people expect to fill the void with things. Number six, to go on a shopping spree. It means to shop excessively. For example, a lot of people try to fill the void by going on a shopping spree. Number seven, to binge on something. It means to do something in a way that is extreme and not controlled. For example, we binge on the wrong things in the pursuit of happiness. Number eight, to worship. It means to love and admire someone or something very much. For example, sadly, a lot of people worship things. Number nine, to go into debt. It means to start owing money. Number 10, to be out of fashion or to be out of trend. It means to be no longer fashionable or trendy. An example sentence, nowadays clothes are out of fashion in a few months. Number 11, to take an inventory of your life. It means to see what you have too much of. And when you decide to take an inventory of your life, you're going to do the following things. Number 12, to declutter. It means to remove things you don't need. For example, I make sure I declutter every month. Number 13, to minimize. It means to reduce something to the least possible level or amount. Number 14, to downsize. It means to reduce the amount of things you have and it can also mean to move from a larger home to a smaller one. Number 15, to let go. It means to throw away unnecessary things. Number 16, to make room. So by throwing away things, you make room. Number 17, to simplify your life. It means to make it more simple. Number 18, to keep things organized, which means to keep things clean and tidy. And two more verbs, they are synonyms. Number 19, to ditch. It means to get rid of something. And 20, to jettison, which means the same. Let's move on to phrasal verbs. We're going to learn eight phrasal verbs to catch on. It means to become fashionable and popular. For example, the idea of minimalism is catching on right now. Number two, to take up space or to take up time. It means to fill space or time. For example, clutter takes up a lot of space. Number three, to rack up. It means to accumulate. For example, she's racked up debts of over 5,000 euros. Number four, to step back from something. It means to stop being involved in something. An example sentence, there is so much visual stimuli that it's essential to learn to step back. Number five, to go through stuff. It means to examine things carefully in order to organize them. Number six, to sort things out. It means to organize things and separate them into different groups or places. For example, I need to sort out all these papers. Two more to go, number seven, to get rid of something. It means to throw away something unwanted. And the last phrasal verb, 
to box up things. It means to put things in boxes. Now we're going to learn seven adjectives. Number one, material. It refers to physical objects and money. For example, we're living in the material world. Number two, materialistic. It means believing that having a lot of money and possessions is the most important thing in life. Number three, vicious. It's something that causes great physical or emotional pain. We can say a vicious cycle. For example, using a credit card can create a vicious cycle. Number four, reckless. It means doing something dangerous and not worrying about the possible results. And we can say reckless spending. An example sentence, reckless spending can make you go into debt. Number five, edgy. It means nervous and not calm. For example, some people feel edgy when they can't satisfy their every whim. Number six, meaningful. It means useful, serious, or important. For example, I'd rather spend my savings on meaningful purposes. And the last adjective, clutter-free. Or we can also say free of clutter. And it means a spacious place. One example about me, I like clutter-free spaces. And now we're going to learn three very interesting idioms. The first one, to keep up with the Joneses. It means to want the same material things as the people around you. For example, keeping up with the Joneses is much more complicated nowadays due to social media. Number two, every nook and cranny. It means everywhere in all possible places. For example, every nook and cranny of his house is filled with stuff. And last but not least, to make ends meet. It means to have enough money to live on. For example, a lot of people struggle to make ends meet because of the economic crisis. Now I want to read some uplifting phrases from the documentaries. The first one, love people and use things because the opposite never works. I think it's such a great phrase to remember because it's very common to see people writing on Instagram, I love my new dress, I love my new pair of jeans. So we should remember what is really important in life and love people and not things. The second phrase that I like a lot is, you don't always have control over how much you earn. What you do have control over is spending. Being self-employed, I can relate to it. Another one, I prefer to have one nice sweatshirt than a closet full of ugly sweatshirts. All the clothes I own are my favorite clothes. I couldn't agree more with Joshua. I also want to have clothes that I would feel like wearing every day. Number four, buying things you don't really need with money you don't really have to impress people you don't even like. It's so raw and true. Number five, we can fall into this trap of trying to buy our way out of the hard times. If you get more of the wrong thing, it becomes less. So this sentence is about filling the void with stuff. And two more phrases. Our memories are not in our things. Our memories are inside us. And the last phrase, by having fewer sentimental items, we're able to enjoy them much more. I think these two phrases can help you let go of sentimental items. So guys, I really recommend watching both documentaries on Netflix. The first one is called Minimalism, a documentary about the important things. And the second documentary has been released this year and it's called The Minimalists, Less is Now. I think they are amazing documentaries that can change your mindset. 
and I want to encourage you to join my challenge. I get rid of at least one thing every month. I usually end up throwing away more items, but I make sure that at least one thing is gone. So join my challenge and do the same, ditch one thing every mm. month. And also when I buy something new, I ask myself if this item is going to add value to my life or just clutter. And I really hope you enjoyed this vocabulary lesson. If you did, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And once again, thank you so much for all your support and help. Thank you for watching my lessons and for being there. And remember, you can catch me on Instagram and keep learning English there with me every single day. Thank you for watching this video and see you next week. Ciao for now!